I also have executives. So governments have executive institutions, including chief executives and cabinets that formulate, implement, and enforce policy through different methods and agencies. So basically, they are the enforcers of your policy. Head of state. So this is a executive position. This is the highest representation of a state. It's very ceremonial, though. They're kind of the face of the country, and they may not be involved with the day-to-day -day political actions. If you ever watch a movie and a CEO is like, I have the boring job, they really do because they're the face of the company. They have to do all the paperwork, and they're not really involved in the actual processes of their cool company. But they may have some formal powers over foreign policy and who they deal with. The head of government is the other main rule that you have to know, and this is the executive leader, sometimes the chief executive, like a president. And they're responsible for formulating, implementing, and execu executing, not executing, executing policies through a cabinet and or various government agencies. And they're the ones who are in the, in the mud, involved in the day-to-day the -day processes. They're getting their hands dirty in the politics. So let's look at China. China's president serves as commander-in-chief, the chair of China's military commission, so kind of similar, and they are the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party. So they have a variety of roles. So the commander-in-chief, as we discussed earlier, is the top government official in charge of military decisions. The president nominates the premier of the Communist Party. So that's the, that's the role, premier. And they are the head of government. And they oversee the civil service and hold great legislative power. So if the premier is the head of government, who's the head of state? The president. So that head of government is going to be more involved. My phone just went off. More involved in the day-to-day processes as we can see here with their greater legislative power now changes in the top leadership so who's the premier who's the president that kind of happens with with behind closed doors in the room where it happens and people don't really have any elections or say in these matters top leaders of the communist party will determine the top governing of features from within the ranks of the party leaders without any input or care of the public whatsoever they literally do not matter to the government all right so about iran for the first time in this whole unit Iran's supreme leader sets the political agenda. They serve as the head of state, and they are the commander-in-chief. Typically, your head of state and commander-in-chief are going to go side by side. They appoint top ministers, the expediency council, the half of the guardian council, and the head of judiciary. Now, what are all these councils? What in the world are we talking about? Well, we'll get into this. But these are the rules that you just kind of have to write down in, in bullet points, in the guided notes, or whatever notes you're taking. And we'll go over what they mean. Let's start with the Guardian Council. So the Guardian Council has a role of vetoing power of legislation that's passed by the legislative branch, which is the Majuals, and essentially they will veto legislation that is not compliant with Islamic law. They also supervise elections for the president, and they will approve candidates to run in the Assembly of Experts elections. Now, the Assembly of Experts appoints the Supreme Leader. And then the Expediency Council is an advisory board for the Supreme Leader. They're kind of like their secretaries and settles disputes between the legislator and the Guardian Council over legislation. Because the legislator would be like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, very, very Muslim law. And the Guardian Council would be like, no, this isn't Muslim at all. So they're kind of that, that compromise there. And they all go, kind of go side by side. Now, I have something kind of interesting to point out here. So the Supreme Leader appoints... Half of the Guardian Council, who approves candidates to run in the Assembly of Experts, who appoint the Supreme Leader. It's, it's kind of interesting how that circle's forming here. Now, the Supreme Leader also appoints the head of the judiciary. Judiciary, not judiciary, the judiciary. They also appoint the other half of the Guardian Council, who appoints the Assembly of Experts, not appoints, but they approve of the Assembly of Experts, essentially, who appoint the Supreme Leader. Again, an another circle kind of forming here. The president is elected for up to two four-year terms as the head of government. They oversee civil services and conduct foreign policy and do all the boring stuff that is very involved in the mud. I guess it, it's probably boring either way what rule you have. The supreme leader is probably a more boring job because they're the head of state. But the president, it's going to be more mm, – it's, it's, it's going to be more tiring because you're going to be – it's like going down to the basement in the mail room and doing the work there rather than just receiving your mail and sending emails saying thank you. Alright, let's talk about Mexico. I love this gif from Bruce Almighty. Such a good movie. Mexico's elected president, because this is a presidential system, serves as both the head of state and head of government. They also serve as the commander-in-chief and the leader of the bureaucracy. And they can approve domestic legislation, which is just legislation within the country, and lead foreign policy. 
They are restricted to one term, uh, which is uh, six years. The president may elect cabinet members, but some positions may need approval of the Senate, not the uh, the Chamber of Deputies, which is the other house. Yeah. Nigeria. Nigeria's elected president is also the head of state and head of government. Remember, this is a presidential system. They serve as the chief executive, the commander in chief, overseeing the military. They also are the head of civil service, and they can approve domestic legislation and conduct foreign policy. So very, very similar to the Mexican system. The president will appoint members of the cabinet with the approval of the Senate. So we can see in both countries, the Senate has a, an interesting role here in approving certain members of the cabinet. Now let's talk about Russia. So Russia's prime minister is the head of government. And they oversee the civil service, and they're nominated by the president. They're not elected by the people. The elected president is the head of state and commander in chief. Typically, those go side on side, like I said. They appoint the top ministers, appoint top judges, conduct foreign policy, and they preside over the Duma in, under certain conditions. Now, what is the Duma? The Duma is a house of the Russian Congress. And as I said in Unit 1, the Duma is primarily United Russia members. Now, same thing as the president and the prime minister. They are particularly United Russia. So they're going to get along pretty well. Now, Russia's president oversees the power ministries like the Federal Security Service and the Foreign Intelligence Service. So they got a lot of power. Now, let's talk about the United Kingdom because we haven't discussed it enough in this course. The United Kingdom's monarch serves as the head of state. They're the ceremonial person. They have that cool wave. I don't know if you ever noticed that before. If you watch Princess Diaries, they actually go over the like those royal waves that they have. That's essentially what the head of state is because they're the face of the country. All the memes come from the head of state because all the Charlie memes are hilarious. And I don't see any memes about the prime minister. And the UK formally appoints the prime minister, who is the leader of the party or coalition that holds the largest number of seats in the House of Commons. So the House of Commons is appointing the prime minister, but the monarch actually like lays down the sword on their shoulders and brings them in. They really don't have any power. They used to, but they don't anymore because of uh, legislator, legislative actions passed by the House of Commons. The prime minister is the head of government. They do all the dirty work. They can call elections, lead legislator in the cabinet. They set the foreign policy agenda, and they serve as a de facto commander-in-chief. So essentially, the UK's monarch is the commander-in-chief, but they aren't really the commander-in-chief. The prime minister does all that. They're also the chief executive over the civil service. Look how, fu how much fun Charlie has. Like that, that zip button looks pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's free, which means it costs zero dollars, and it really does help me out. Leave a comment down below with any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. There's some links down below in the description with practice tests, key terms, guided notes, all that fun stuff. Head on over to the next AP Comparative video on some really cool political stuff.